Hello everyone. One last note, just to add on for uh, Duckyworth here. Um, I'm sorry for all of the uh, difficulties that came about as a result of the uh, of this uh, Let's Play here episode here. Uh, first of all, there was a problem with a, a ton of uh, frames dropping with uh, the episode, so um, I had to go back re-record uh, the video footage and uh, put it over the top uh, to try to uh, salvage the video that ended up getting lost. And then, when I was uh, listening back to this uh, episode, I found out that there was a little bit of noise cracking in the background of uh, my new uh, headphones that uh, I'm trying to use for my... Um, for my uh, Let's Play episodes from now on, I found out that it's it's not the headphones itself because I'm trying to I'm recording using the headphones now and it turns out uh, fine. It's more uh, an OBS problem, but I've put on some uh, noise uh, suppressors um, in the background, so hopefully that will help with a uh, future uh, Let's Play episodes. But unfortunately with this episode here I only noticed the crackling after I'd finished compiling it and I was about to getting ready to uh, save it into a bigger uh, video file. Uh, so And the, uh, and the end of the video uh, cuts off awkwardly because um, it, uh, recorded, it stopped recording at a really strange time. So yeah, uh, I decided to upload this anyway because I had put a ton of effort into this uh, episode and... Uh, Despite some flubs, uh, there were still some funny moments that I'd like to share with it. But I apologise for any uh, difficulties came about uh, during the production of this. Duckyworth out. Bye everyone, and take care. Hello everybody! Duckyworth here, and it is that time, yet again, to return to the wonderful, erotic world <laughs> that is tender, loving care. Oh, actually, uh, maybe I should say the extremely horrific and increasingly disturbing world of tender loving care because last time it really began to get into uh, some particularly creepy and unsettling scenes. Yes, I, I was actually a little bit surprised by how um, weird and disturbing and creepy it was getting last time. I mean, with all the goofiness and all the strange stuff that was going on with, uh, like, a lot of the game's humour, like, how much it tries too hard to take itself seriously, and then it just chucks in, like, these weird questions, like, people, characters with bowel problems, <laughs> and the characters also, like, having, like, the most ridiculous, the most ridiculous acting and all the most stupid things ever that you can ever possibly imagine. Then it just begins to throw in things like some rather questionable things going on with like uh, between the two leads and uh, Alison and uh, Michael proving themselves to be um, just as unhinged as each other and as well as Catherine like truly uh, showing how off the deep end she is. Um, I'm actually willing to give it credit for how... Um, it is taking me a bit by surprise how genuinely unnerving it is getting in quite a few segments here. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's strange. It's like... It, it's, it doesn't quite mesh. It's like a lot of the funny moments. It, like, it has, still has some really strange and hilarious moments going on in like the questions and like some of the acting pieces. But then it jumps into like all these really weird... Um, psychosexual thriller elements with the characters just talking to each other and uh, about these really unsettling topics and some of the things that are going on in like uh, the psychi psychological files of the characters and it does get really it does get genuinely unnerving in quite a few places I don't know how to describe it. It's just, it's just strange. But uh, and yes, you might notice a little bit of a difference in my uh, audio quality because I have yet again. I've been trying to make a little bit of a change with how I do my recording for these. I moved on to OBS with uh, recording my uh, video footage, and now I'm moving on to something else with my uh, audio footage. I'm using. Um, an actual better set of headphones with um, a microphone on the end of them. Um, 
NG6010, I think is uh, the brand name of the headphones that I bought. I just bought them today. Because, I mean, as good as the the quality is when it comes to like recording on the phone the problem with that is that it results in me having to splice the audio and the video together and trying to like sync it up together in an audio file in a, in a video file on um what's the, what's the name of the uh what i use open shot video editor that's what i use but it takes something like five hours a time to save um, the videos and i've had a little bit of a muck around uh with uh, the sound the sound quality uh because i mean this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a dip compared to how um the audio quality is on the phone but it is i think it is still much better than it turned out with um my um my one pet set of headphones that I tried using with a microphone at the end. I tried using the recording with a la uh, the first time. That was one that I got from work. Um, I borrowed it from a work plate from my work office when I started working from home, and it just sounded. I mean, it did the job for meetings, but recording it like this, it just sounded dreadful. Um, but I think it, I've done a little bit of a playing around with the audio mixer and uh, trying to get it to sound right, and I think it sounds um, all right now. But if there's any problems with uh, the audio, or you think that anything needs uh, changing, uh, just let me know, and um, I'll adjust it for uh, next time. But for now, I think I'm happy with how it go, how it's going to go. So let's begin with uh, the next episode of uh, Tender Loving Care. Oh God, that one there. Okay, so last time we set off. Um, Michael, uh, John Hurt seemed like he was uh, completely um, incompetent when it came to uh, keeping an eye on Catherine and uh, what she's been up to. Michael and Alison get a dog named Punky. <laughs> Punky. What a name for a dog. And um, we continued the saga of the Yoni Lingam massage because truly that's the most important thing to happen in uh, this game so far. And... Uh, Michael came back to work, and it turned out that it was uh, that everyone thinks he's gone nuts because he has gone nuts. Oh, and uh, last time, um, I remember doing a lot like a note in the game, like uh, when it came to Catherine's, uh, Catherine's, uh, Catherine talking about a boyfriend uh, ogling uh, teenage girls. Um, the thing, the thing is, I, I thought that. Okay, I know it was him that was eyeing them, not her. So he's the one who would, who's got like the most uh, like Peter, pedophilic, uh, pedophilic um, tendencies there. Uh, but I think the thing that made me think that um, Catherine had them as well was that she never called him out on it, and instead she decided to dress up in um, teenage schoolgirls' uniforms to turn him on, and she just seemed completely blasé about it. So that says a lot about her character here. And I don't know where this is going to go. I'm, um, I'm unnerved. Yeah. And now we're in Catherine's uh, room, and it looks pretty... Yeah, what's this music? <laughs> uh. Okay, so let's start off with, um... What's here? In the, uh... Okay, uh, let's see what's in uh, her diary. The angel. When I was a child, I often heard stories of angels who give up the blissful life of heaven for the sunlight of earth. I heard that when a sorrowful heart hides its pain from the world, it bleeds in silence and disintegrates in tears. Earth. It offers anxious prayers to be rescued, then the angel soars down and takes it gently to paradise. Yes, an angel came to me also, and on shining wings takes my soul away from all pain to heaven. Hmm. Okay. okay, we're done. I think we're done with the Yoni Lingar massage now, so what's it gonna be um, going on with this part? Uh, Oh, oh god! Oh god, it's, we're still going? We're still going with this? Sacred techniques of Tantra. The art of sex magic. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
one of my friends, uh, Ruby Rouge six four nine. She said she likes my um my voice to do for the readings for this. So I think I'm going to keep up with this. I drew a bit of inspiration for. I'm going to try to go for a bit of like a Stolas uh, from a hell of a boss when it comes to this. Okay, so here we go. Sex magic is the conscious utilization of orgasmic energy in the service of active reality creation. It derives from the belief that orgasm constitutes the most powerful of all human experiences, that orgasmic energy is harnessable, and that reality is determined by the individual. Begin by lying on your back with arms and legs comfortably outstretched. Breathe deeply and relax your body, starting with the feet and moving towards your head. Visualize each section of your body becoming relaxed. Pay particular attention to your stomach and jaw. Relax them completely. Take your time and continue breathing deeply. Identify the reality you wish to create. Define it as specifically as possible, and in present sense, as if rea it already exists. I earn one. Identify the reality you wish to create. Define it. I earn $100,000 a year, for example. Write the reality down on a piece of paper. I speak it aloud as a mantra or affirmation. Focus intensely on the created reality. See hear, smell, and feel it. Visualize yourself within it. Imagine, for example, that you feel like a person who earns ten, a hundred thousand dollars per year. What sorts of smells and tastes surround you as such a person? What do you look like? What do you sound like? Breathe into the created reality. Once you have vividly experienced the created reality, Turn your attention away from it, and once again, focus on relaxing your body. Initiate sexual activity. This activity may take the form of masturbation. Isn't that supposed to have a you? <laughs> or love making with a sexual partner. Uh, a supportive partner. Remember to breathe deeply, and to keep your body relaxed. Oh, God, sorry. Bring yourself nearly to orgasm, and then cease sexual activity. Repeat this process of approaching orgasm and then backing off at least six times. While approaching orgasm for a seventh time, mentally recall the image of your created reality. Oh, okay. Um, once again, focus intense attention upon and experience yourself within it, while holding your focus fully. Allow yourself to orgasm. Deliberately channel the orgasm into the created reality. Feel the created reality being born into existence. Keep your body relaxed and breathe. The created reality now exists. It will manifest either immediately or at some future point in either its complete form or as an opportunity or insight. The power of sex magic <laughs> is extraordinary. As you learn to master it, it will quite literally enable you to achieve and acquire all that you desire. Okay, so we've moved on from yoni and lingam massages to learning that having good sex will enable you to get make your dreams come true. So all you need to do is have sex while thinking about uh, whatever dream you want and then it'll magically happen. Hmm, does that mean that if I... um? dream that I will somehow be able to come up with um, a uh, have a winning the lottery all I need to do is have sex and it'll masturbate and then I'll be able to have um, get all that um, immediately 
Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to think about that uh, next time I decide to uh, do that. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Let's, ha let's have a listen to what um, uh, Catherine has been up to this time on her... Uh, on her... Uh, on this here. Michael opened the door while I was meditating. Oh, well, he wasn't really subtle, was, was he? Naked. What do you mean, as usual? I could feel his eyes all over me. Yeah. Uh, uh. I'm so horny. Oh, God! <laughs> Wait, that's it? <laughs> that was it? Just. Oh, yeah. I could see him upon me. I'm horny. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh god okay let's have a look at this I had a vivid dream I'm out walking in the field behind Michael and Allison's house it's hot and the sun is oh, excuse me it's hot and the sun is beating down on my hair When I touch my head, it feels like a windowsill that's been in the sun all day. I walk up to a huge blackberry bush, as big as a house. The blackberries are dark and ripe. I see a hole in the brambles. I get down on my hands and knees and crawl inside. Ouch. Well, that's not going to be comfortable. You, you've just come across... That sounds like Fawn Valley from uh, The Secret of Nim. Or the, the Fawn Bush that they're in. And now you're just going to crawl inside it. Uh, yeah, that's not a very good... Um, I don't think that's going to turn out very well. Even if you're going into the hole, you're still going to end up uh, cutting yourself on the brambles. Uh, that's not a very good idea. Uh, okay. Somebody has cut a trail. Just big enough for me to be able to crawl through without get. Oh, there we go. To crawl through without getting caught on the thorns. The further I get into the heart of the bushes, the dark and cooler it is. I turn a corner and come face to face with Michael. He's lying on his back. Oh, he is naked. I ask him where Allison is. He gestures vaguely behind me. I turn and look. Allison is caught in the... In the stickers? In the stickers? Stickers? What? Car stickers? What? Like a rabbit in barbed... Oh, no, now it's turning into Watership Down. <laughs> She's caught in a snare. Her eyes are wide open and she is panting. Little drops of blood well up where the thorns have pierced her skin. The drops of blood fall into the ground and become juicy red berries. Michael is eating the berries and his mouth is stained with the blood-red juice. Uh, this is reminding me of... Um, there's an old uh, wives' tale, I think, where um, you know why um, f like why are holly bushes, why they're red. The story is is that a lamb was caught in a holly bush, and to try to get out, it had to crawl through the bush and cut itself, and the drops of blood that fell became holly berries. Yeah, nice cheery stuff. He tells me to come to him. I feel my loins aching to surround his flesh. I crawl over to him and get on top and he slips inside me. He is so hot and hard <laughs> that I gasp. As we move in rhythm, we pluck berries from the ground and eat them. I woke up very hungry. Oh, well, I mean, if you can have sex like that after you see someone just getting cut up. Well, wait a minute. Are you dreaming about uh, Michael cutting up Allison and then you're going to 
sleep. I thought you wanted to get together with a. Uh... I thought you wanted to get together with um, Allison. Now you want to get together with Michael. Oh, so you try I trying to cheat on both of them at the same time? Oh God. Uh. Oh dear. Anything in the bathroom here? Uh, no, I think that's for. Uh... Oh, we're still going with a book. I thought we were done with the book. Okay, let's see what's uh, on the agenda for the, the erotic art book this time. The visions. What's it? This looks like a Hieronymus Bosch painting. Ugh. What's, <laughs> what's that? Is that a leaf getting shoved up the... That looks like leaves getting shoved up the guy's arse. <laughs> Oh, okay, now we're moving on to uh, someone's very weird fetishes. Once we've chosen to look, what do we do? What do we actually see in erotic art? What is it that tugs us, taunts us, tells us that we shouldn't be looking? Sometimes we're not so sure. A naked body is undeniably erotic, but when that body is curled around a huge red strawberry, sucking out its juices. It becomes like a phallic symbol. Eroticism moves to a different level. A man picking flowers from his lover's upended <laughs> ass <laughs> suggests something. Yeah, it suggests that there's a very strange uh, fetish that someone has. A naked body carrying a fish Stiff, one-eyed, mouth open, means something else, but we're not quite sure what it is. Oh, it is a Hieronymus Bosch painting. Explore this close-up of Bosch's Garden of Terrestrial Delights, painted almost 500 years ago. Within it, you'll find a collection of erotic symbols that appeared in art long before Freud's theories about dreams and sex. Perhaps this painting and your response to it Ooh. Hmm. Perhaps this painting and your response to it will change when you know that fruit, soft and sweet, is a symbol for women in fertility. Think of even the apple. Biting into the flesh of fruit is lost, the forbidden fruit, or sex that somehow involves the mouth. Wearing fruit is temptation, seduction, an invitation to be eaten. The flowers are female, possibly because, because they are sex organs for plants. Well, that reminds me of uh, Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd's The Wall, uh, the opening segment where it gets into like uh, the phallic symbol of uh, the flowers um, during the first bit of it when uh, there's that what shall we do? What shall we do? And, and then it just starts to get really graphic and then it just goes into the bit with Shall we buy a new guitar? Shall we drive a more powerful car? Yeah, the bit that um, goes into that just before that and when uh, the, the wall starts screaming. I've never seen the wall. I'd like to. Because that sounds like it's going to be... It looks like a really interesting film and the album is wonderful. Possibly because their ruffles and ridges so closely resemble women's most private parts. Uh, as much as I, as much as I, uh, rip on this game for like how uh, strange it gets, it does give forth some interesting uh, things once in a while about um, erotic art. I will say that I'm going to appreciate some bits a bit more. And I mean, I know that a jump forward uh, with some of like the bits of the. Uh, Bits that I'm trying to write, a bits of a text, but that's just because I don't want all of it to. It's a let's play, not a let's read. Oh, but maybe we I might read like a novel at some point, or do another recording of a, like reading a novel or a short story, like with my Telltale Heart. You never know. Uh, flowers that are drawn losing their petals or cut from their roots symbolise a loss of virginity. Just as we might say a virgin is deflowered by her first lover. That fish are symbols of the penis. Strong, single-minded, moving with short, powerful strokes. Swimming, well, that's, well, given relations to 
penises was not the only thing that's swimming. Swimming against the current. Look closer. What do you really see? Huh. Master bedroom. Let's move on. To see if there's going to be anything related to any uh, creepy uh, radio recordings here. Okay. Oh, another bit of a diary. Oh, is it going to be my... All talk and no play, my callous and adore boy. Oh, God. It is a bit unnerving, like, seeing that it's shorter. Like, Alison's not writing as much about her inner thoughts as uh, Jodie's, like, keeping an eye on her. I'm, go I'm not going to be surprised if it just turns into something like Jodie's always right. J uh, sorry, Catherine's always right. Catherine's always right. Catherine's always right. Catherine thinks that it will be good for Jodie to see other playing and... To see other playing. Don't you mean see other children playing? And having fun, even if she can't join in. Catherine says that it will motivate her to get well. I'm back from med... Uh, oh, Jesus. I'm back from meditating. I feel much better. Catherine says that my mind is incredibly powerful and that I don't have to live in fear. Michael is really stressed out from being back at work. He needs to do some meditating. Well, hopefully not at work, or else it'll give people another reason to stare at him. Yeah, he just starts streaking while he's at work. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll have an audience for another reason. Because it turns into a, a gigolo. <laughs> oh, okay, let's tune into the radio here. Hello, Dr. Betty. Uh, oh, we got a guy. 53-year-old physician. A couple years ago, I had a falling out with my family. Oh. Now I want to reconcile. Why did okay. you have a falling out? My grandpa sodomized me. Uh, oh, really? what? Yeah. You what see, the hell? I've been seeing a psychiatrist for some other problems. I'd rather not go into those right now. Uh. And he suggested regressive therapy. Well, it came out under hypnosis that Granddad had done these things to me. Then more reclaimed memories came flooding back. Oh, I God. realized that my mother had taken me into her bed and acted improperly too. Uh, and my father, and my great uncle Dick. Uh, your great uncle Dick. At the urging of the psychiatrist, Dick. I flew back east and confronted all of them. They absolutely denied that such abuse had ever taken place. My mother even called me a lying bastard. Can you uh, believe it? It must have been quite a shock for her. Well, my father disowned me. My brothers and sisters won't speak to me. I'm still in therapy. My, my insurance has run out. And I'm paying twenty thousand a year out of my own pocket. My wife and I have split up. My practice is suffering. Dr. Betty, my life is going down the toilet. Stan, you've got some serious problems. <laughs> oh, yeah, no kidding. I going to another therapist. He told me all those reclaimed memories were false. Oh. You don't say. Can you what? That? God, I what? An idiot. Because you hurt your family. She just says well, you don't say. Yeah. And because... <sighs> it's kind of funny. You see, Granddad is dying. And I just found out he's worth thirty million dollars, Doctor Betty. I went back in the will. Stan, you are one sick puppy. Okay. So now we have a guy who got. Se it sounds like he's been sexually assaulted by every single person in his family. He goes to therapists about it. He's in debt. The therapists say it sounds like he's lying about everything that's going on. And I don't blame him for wanting all this money as compensation for everything that's gone on. And this quack on the radio, she just says, You're one sick puppy. Jesus, this lady needs to be fired. I hope that anyone... The next TAT yes, okay. will begin... Yes, okay, John Hurt. I think... I hope that anyone who's had to go into therapy for any reason or have anything like this happen don't end up suffering, um, having everyone just, uh, shrug off everything they say or say that they're, um... Ah! Oh, oh, oh no, she's drawing pretty good huh um actually, actually it's uh actually it's all right much better than some of the other creepy things joe did ah what's that i'm look? a little worried about this meeting with michael i'm gonna have to tell him more than i really want to but uh, i've got to do something he's getting frustrated to the point where he might actually ask me to leave 
Well, yeah. I can't let that happen. This case is far too important. I'll tell you to leave. I have an opportunity here to really do something for my patient, and I'm not going to let anything ruin my plans. Do something for your patient. Define something. Careful. Everything's in a very delicate balance right now. Wait, want me to be careful? We're building towards an actual cure for Allison, but she's far from ready. I've got to play this thing right. Maybe. Ah, uh, no, 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 I no. change into something a little more. Oh, Jesus. Effective. Uh, back to the creepy music. So, wait a minute. Now she's. She's the one who's drawing the paint, the drawings that Jody has been doing. Is she going to tell? Allison, that Jody's been drawing them, but it's really been her. Jesus, what a manipulative bint. Uh, okay, what's on the TV? Uh, hopefully it won't be something too, uh... She's a goddess of love, but the love is of herself. She becomes, in reality, a writhing exhibitionist to the dismay and bewilderment of her fiancé. Uh... Why is this on a children's TV? Oh god. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if this is actual uh, film footage. Uh... Or something they recorded uh, specifically for this. Mommy, can I do that? <laughs> Just that's what Jody uh, is going to end up uh, doing. Uh, the dead ghost of d the dead ghost. The ghost of Jody when she. Uh... Oh God. Oh. When she starts, uh, when she's watching this, she's going to... Mommy, I want to be a stripper when I grow up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, if, uh, if it actually does go the ghost route, like, I've, I'm honestly kind of hoping it does, uh, just to make this more interesting, then it's going to turn very... Uh, it's going to be very, very... Odd, to put it mildly. Oh, got the shame boy again. Oh well, if it's the same, if it's the same, uh, seven. If it's the same uh, book that uh, we saw last time, uh, then maybe it's the same book uh, all the way through. But come on. Oh, okay. Here we go. So many thoughts running through my head. Oh, I forgot the. Hang on. Hang on, just while it's on my mind, uh, I need to go back to Catherine's room because uh, I forgot to. Um, oh, good! Oh, good! You can you can skip those. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. If I've already seen a, a video or I don't want it to go on for too long, I can I can skip that way. Okay, what's this? Masochist. A 35-year-old male was referred to us by the university hospital, where he had been treated for several deep gashes and puncture wounds of his thighs and buttocks. Lieutenant Dan, you got hit in the buttocks. <laughs> Patient had paid a professional sadist and her accomplished to to bind him under to a table with leather belts and cut and poke him with a scalpel. The doctor who sewed him up had warned him, said it what the doctor had or had warned him that he could have lost his leg. This had scared the patient into seeking professional help. He was terrified that his masochistic behaviour might one day get him killed. 
The patient was a successful lawyer with a wife and two children. A year ago, he and his wife had experimented with pinching and scratching during love play. This had turned him on more than anything he had ever experienced. He encouraged his wife to tie him up and whip her. She was reluctant to hurt her husband, and after he demanded that she draw blood with a whip, she refused to participate in any more sex that involved inflicting pain. I mean, when it comes to BDSM, like, safe, sane and consensual when it comes to her, but it's got to be something like both partners have got to be willing to do something with it, you know. Uh, never go to, I mean, from what I've seen, uh, never go too far with what your partner isn't uh, comfortable with. And it's like, after afterwards, you're supposed to, uh, like, calm down from the session and, like, um... And, like comfort them and say that everything's okay and like a uh, make it and like a uh, wind down from the BDSM play that's what I've looked up when I uh, yes for research purposes I researched uh, people who are into BDSM play and uh, how uh, like things like Fifty Shades of Grey get it wrong for for, for research purposes uh, I don't intend to do it myself uh, if it's uh, your kink um, I know that it's a lot of people's kinks, but um, like power play, but uh, I don't plan to do it myself. Uh, not, at least not yet. Um, they went back to their normal sex life together, but the patient secretly sought out sadists and prostitutes that would satisfy his new obsession. His morbid fantasy life dwelled on images of himself being tortured and beaten. Okay, that's a bit of a problem if it goes that far. Once he. Oh my god! Uh, oh, oh, I'm kind of wishing I didn't come back to read this. Oh, dear. Once, he hired... Uh, uh, well, well, okay, wait a minute. If you're hiring them to do it and you're, you know that they're doing it, then is it technically rape? I mean, I mean if it's... Uh, I mean, it sounds bad. I mean, it's pretty... If your kink is getting molested by someone, then, uh, yeah, I'd say that's a bit too far, but would it technically be rape? I, 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 I don't know, but, uh, once he hired two women to rape him at gunpoint, yay, sexy. The guns, he insisted, had to be loaded with real bullets. Oh! Oh, Jesus, no wonder! Two weeks after starting his treatment at the clinic, we were notified by the police that the patient had been murdered. His body was found in an abandoned house. He had been tortured and mutilated. The next TAT uh, will be given uh, okay, in yeah, the yeah, living room. Yeah. Next skip. I'd say he died happy, but... Like, death, death by snoo snoo, but that's not, uh, oh, Jesus, that's, and it's not played for laughs like, um, Future Armors was with the, with, <laughs> with the death by snoo snoo, that's, that is dark, that is messed up, and that sounds like more like something out of Seven, uh, like that one prostitute who, um, had, a uh, Kevin Spacey's character, um, well, knowing Kevin Spacey now, it's, uh, I can imagine him doing something like that in real life. Hiring someone to, um, strap on, um, like, really uncomfortable, um, a really terribly looking blade to a guy's crotch and kill a prostitute with it. Uh, 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 oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay, that was horrible. That was... Uh, so many thoughts running through my head. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. I shouldn't have drunk so much last night, uh, tonight. Work was hellish. Everybody kept looking at me like I was some weird animal in a cage. When I got home, I was so stressed out, I could have beat that stupid dog to death with a stick. Alison was cooking, though. Surprised the hell out of me. She hasn't cooked since the day of the accident. For a second, it felt like I'd stepped back in time. 
It was wonderful. I wanted to run upstairs and thank Catherine for bringing my wife back to me, but when I saw Jodie's room, I felt like I'd walked into an episode of a Twilight Zone. It was unreal. The attention to detail is maniacal. The toys... Oh my god, it's right! I thought, I thought they... I thought they left the room as it was when Jodie died, because, like, they couldn't bring themselves to, like, put all the toys away or uh, rent it out to anyone. I, I thought, because we, we've never been allowed into that room before a, a few chapters ago. I thought, I thought they just left the room, but, oh gosh. The attention to detail is maniacal. The toys scattered about, the sleeve of a shirt sticking out from a dresser. Oh god, this does sound like something out of the Twilight Zone. A crayon mark on the wall. It's terrifying. I feel such anger towards her as I write this, and yet, I can't stop thinking about her. I went charging into a room to finally have it out with her. Uh, what, what's that mean? Have it out? What, have what, at your penis? <laughs> but when I opened the door, she was sitting there, meditating in the Yoni Lingam position completely nude. I couldn't turn my eyes away. Her back was straight, the curve of her spine perfect. With her shoulders up, her full... Wait, what? With her shoulders up, her full breasts were awesome! Her skin was smooth and tight. The curve of her waist sharp, but feminine. She was so still. She looked poured from a mould, or like a statue by Rodan. I imagined running my hand down her spine and feeling the coolness of stone. I imagined running my... Uh, oh, whatever the red van. Touching her breasts, kissing her back. She didn't turn her head towards me. She didn't move a limb or shift her weight. She simply continued to stare forward, her concentration unbroken. I didn't want to stop looking at her. Her gorgeous body was so incredibly arousing. I shut the door slowly and stood there. Feeling weak need way. Wow! If you did all that in half a second, you did a lot in like half a second. Just as soon as you opened it, you just had those uh, thoughts like coming straight away. I shut the door slowly and stood there feeling weak need. I wanted to peek in again. I wanted to touch her. So, uh, okay, you've got problems. She's not healthy. Alison isn't healthy, but Michael's got. Michael's got things going on as well. I fantasised about walking to the door, taking off my clothes and... No, don't! That's what she wants! So I jumped in the cold swimming pool. And now I'm drunk. Everyone knew it before we arrived at the hospital, but no one said it. Later, I found out that it was a technique. The idea was to ease the parents into the realisation that the child is dead. They went so far as to work as reviving her, filling me with false hope. God damn bastards. Alison was already upstairs getting x-rays. I sat in the waiting room alone, the other people staring at me with their stupid pity. The nurse came to me first. She wore her death mask. I have a way of saying it without uttering a word. It was as though death itself had possessed them for a short time. It uses them to announce its victory. I followed the nurse to the examination room where the doctor stood beside the body. I heard a strange agonised sob and realised a moment later that a sound emanated from me. It was as if I were watching a scene from the movie. There lay my beautiful daughter, crushed, broken, dead. The doctor said, I'm sorry, but I didn't blame him. I couldn't blame anyone but, but myself. I took her hand into mine and wished her death with, wished away her death with all my heart. I can almost feel those cool fingers in my hands now. Who can I talk to? I'm so alone. When Jodie couldn't sleep at night, I could tell her stories. She loved hearing my silly stories, and she would come help come up with the plots. We created a whole world populated by talking cats who lived in castles and fought jousts against dogs. Would it be horrible if I were to pretend that Jodie's sitting here on my lap? Would it be sick if I were to tell a story now? Oh, oh, oh dear. Yes, it would be sick. I'm losing it. I need some sleep. I'm at work. It's lunchtime, so I thought I'd catch up on my journal. Something terrifying happened last night. I w awoke around two... Wait, is this your work computer? Or did you bring it on a floppy disk? Because uh, floppy still existed back then. I woke around two in the morning. I'd fallen asleep on the sofa, and I was still buzzing from all the alcohol. <laughs> I staggered upstairs, and I heard a strange sound. A soft, childlike moaning. Coming from Jodie's room. Oh god, if it's not a ghost, is it going to be Catherine's pretending to be Jodie to entertain Alison's, like, 
psychological disorder uh, problems. Oh, God. My heart started beating wildly. It wasn't just my imagination. I heard a clear, terrifyingly real moan coming from Jody's room. I couldn't force myself to look into the room. I must have still been drunk. Maybe I was dreaming. What is going on? Am I losing my mind? I got the runaround from Dr. Turner's secretary. Dr. Turner, Dr. Turner's secretary, Dr. Mrs. Greenstreet, she seems like the only sane, normal character in this whole thing. She is really a bitter, nasty woman. She told me that, she's in, that he's in Portland. Why didn't he call me? Why didn't he tell me that he was leaving? I had to tell him about the birthday party. I mean, this is too much. The birthday party thing is just going overboard. It's insane. I actually went to a toy store today and bought a pin of a donkey game for my dead kid. Duncan and I went and played tennis at lunch. I didn't really feel like playing, but I thought getting out and sweating would relieve some of my tension. Bad idea. I kept missing shots. Finally, I got so mad I smashed my racket onto the concrete and broke it in half. Duncan looked at me like I was insane. I'm going to have it out with Catherine. Stop saying have it out! It sounds like you're going to whip your penis out. Oh, whatever. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Is this the same uh, pamphlet again? Some of this writing is getting... As I get more into, like, the story as it skips over, it stops getting so uh, ridiculous. Oh, hello, square cow. <laughs> no matter what happens, I can always rely on you to cheer me up. <laughs> That's how crazy everything becomes. Living room. I, I, am, I am getting into uh, the story now. Uh, and it is... I am actually giving a little bit more credit to um, some, of the, some of the parts of it. Is this, is this the test? Some parts of like uh, the darker elements of the story. When you've concluded this test, you will return to the story. Do you wish to proceed? Yes, and hopefully this time won't be any tarot readings. Okay. Okay, John Hurst, show me what you got. Uh, Sometimes I think I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Oh, what's this paint? What's this drawing? What's she lo going towards? Is that... Don't go into the light! But I can't help it! It's so beautiful! <laughs> oh. Uh, well, I mean, I think that all, all the time, just like from one of the strange things I, uh... <laughs> the strange things that I, uh, watch and, uh, play like this. So, uh, true. Blindfolds uh, are... Uh, what are they doing? Are they having... They're having betting while they're blindfolded. Scary, mysterious, exciting, fun, silly, mysterious. I go dancing whenever I can. <laughs> what, what's she looking at there? Uh, oh my god, look at his nose. Or is this, honey, you do realise that your eyebrow is a. Uh, you forgot to comb your eyebrows this morning, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> God, he's he's chuffed. He's having the time of his life, and she's just oh my god. <laughs> Wherever I can, only when I have to, on special occasions. I don't go dancing at all. I hate to dance on special occasions. Betting oh. on an event makes it more thrilling for me. Greyhounds. Uh, I don't. I'm not a betting man. I don't usually bet. So uh, no opinion. What would be the most appropriate <laughs> caption for this photo? <laughs> oh my god, I love, I love this! I love this photo! That's a cute, that's a duck! Oh my god's face! Duck attacks man. Scientist displays trained fowl. Duck eats mustache! Definitely. Duck eats mustache! That's me. That's my way of uh, getting my moustache tw trimmed, as my nickname's Ducky Worth. <laughs> Duck eats moustache. Is ah! this person oh, oh, going Jesus. along with this event by their own free will? Uh, oh, oh, I thought that was something else there. Oh, oh but we're just getting eye drops. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God, it looks like they're turning into like that Ludovic um, from uh, McClockwork Orange. 
Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you. It's a sin. It's a sin doing that to lovely, lovely Ludwig van. Oh, oh God. No, they've been drugged and forced into this. Yes, it's a necessary operation. I, I don't want to know. My uh, life is based on duty. What's that? Is he going into a... Is he going to prison or a public or a uh, special services? Uh... What was the name of M60s that I had to go into? Uh, can't remember the name of it. Um, uh, true, false, uh, no opinion. What well, I mean, I mean, I do have a duty to, uh, uh, no opinion. I enjoy um, lots of oh, physical contact with friends and even acquaintances. I I'm not a very physical, uh, sporty person. Uh, with my friends, uh, I mean taking uh, recent events uh, out of the equation. I don't usually uh, do a uh, not rough housing or false. Sometimes um, it's good to oh, drink, dance like a man. What is that? And have sex with a stranger. What the heck is that? Is that a pay? Is that a tail? Or has he got something else poking out of his? Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, <laughs> Okay, we're back into the silliness. Or is that a... Uh, 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 true, false, no opinion. Uh, have... Uh, <laughs> false. Especially if you look like that. Oh, here we go. It's time for my Yoni Lingam massage. Open up. I want to join you. <laughs> oh. Come in. Oh, she, she's got clothes on for change. Oh, but she's got a dressing gown on, so... Oh, dear. I'm probably going to have to censor this. Uh, Alison yeah. thinks you're teaching me how to meditate. Might not be such a bad idea. Oh, dear. You could oh. use some relaxation. Oh, dear. You're extremely tense. Me? I'm sure it's a result of all that's happened. Imagine that we've all got actually got brain cells. Have sex with me and then it'll happen. Like my book <laughs> says. <laughs> I don't understand why uh, we're supporting Allison's illusion. Exactly. Yes, thank you. We're not supporting Allison's illusion. We're supporting Allison. Uh, no, you're supporting her illusions. Your illusions. I know. It seems we're going in the wrong direction. Yes. Before I came here, she was floating around in a fog and you were sustaining it. It would have gone on that way until one of you broke down completely. One of us? Don't think you're immune. Allison suffers openly. You contain it. Oh. Look, my wife is a very sick person, and you're here to treat her, so just leave me out of this. She's a very sick and person. You're tearing me She's apart, Catherine. She's working around the house. She's off drugs completely. She may be functioning better. Then what are they doing in the bed? But the you're treating the, the symptoms and not the problems. In the we cannot go state. on pretending that Jody's still alive forever. Uh, you need to be patient. You don't tell me what I need to be. <laughs> I'm just about out of fucking patience here. <laughs> are you going to continue with oh, this damn. fantasy forever? No. But if I had contradicted her from the start, she simply would have shut me out. By supporting her, she permitted me to enter her world. So where the hell are we going with all this? Up the creek with our paddle. By reliving the tragedy. And what is that supposed to mean? Oh dear. One night, the accident must happen again. What? No. Uh. Wait, you gonna try and get him to kill someone else? How's that work? You don't mean we drive back to the same spot? No. I mean, we describe it to her. Make her remember. But not until we've laid a foundation of acceptance. And you think this will work? Uh, yes, I do. Oh. You're out of your fucking mind. Make her really Why the don't accident. You think about it. And try to... Maybe we can get together again tomorrow. Hmm. And we'll I don't know. Uh, be part of it if you I like. mean, I know I said that confronting her about it would Maybe. be a... And not entertaining a delusion. You, it. you need it more than you know. Would be a the right thing to do but I'm well aware of my needs uh, I'm not entirely sure whether this would be the best way to go about it because I mean if if you do it wrong then that's just going to uh, she's just going to completely break down again and then all the uh, uh, 
Wow, he's got a... I just noticed the pronounced uh, cod piece that he had. <laughs> this is a trouser there. <laughs> was it always that pronounced? Ah. Wheelchair. Was there a wheelchair always there? Catherine's planning something to do with this uh, big reveal, I know it. Oh. Oh, okay. Theoretically, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> but how's she going to pull it off? Is she really going to restage the accident? Ah, uh, dear. And there's such a high degree of risk. I hadn't really understood what Catherine was doing until now. I do wish she'd kept me more informed. I wish you to keep us all informed. Do you think it'll work? No, not really. Michael's mental state is comparable to Alison's. Okay, this is... This is one thing I do agree with Catherine on. So, uh, I agree. If I received a lot of money, the first thing I would do is... Oh, well, I just got paid from work yesterday, so this is a very fitting one. <sighs> Buy something expensive. Take a trip around the world. Donate some to charity. Go to Vegas. Invest it. Donate some to charity. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, I mean, if it was me, I'd put... Donate a portion to charity and then put the uh, rest of it into savings. That's what I would do. Donate some to charity. People who <laughs> have sex in the dark. Uh... Oh, and here we go back to the old fashioned prudes. Wait, having sex in the dark? Is that really that weird? Prudes. Embarrassed. Romantic. Missing out. Roman I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm romantic. I have hard uh, <laughs> fantasized about having sex uh, with <laughs> Uh, wow. Better now we're jumping into bestiality. Um, are you, are you talking about uh, feral animals or f anthro? Because um, I have hardly ever true uh, with a yeah. I wouldn't mind somebody spying on me while I was in the bedroom. False. Oh. Okay, that was a quick one. <laughs> so now we're getting into a. Uh, I hope we're not getting into bestiality with me. <laughs> God, it, this is the only thing that shows up in this. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Where's the next one? Oh dear, we're back in Jody's room for the next uh, uh, session here, so that's not going to... Uh... It's not going to be a fun one, I can tell you. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this one here. I think I set Catherine straight today. Uh, well, hopefully we have, because... Uh, or else it's going to turn out that she's going to uh, try to double-cross us later. I think she understands where I'm coming from. I think she respects me. We had a good talk. She's finally letting me into her world. She told me her plan of action. It made me feel a lot better. I just wish she would stop tempting me. Yeah, and being a... Uh, I mean, what are you... I don't... What's your end goal in this? Are you just going to try to... Oh, no. I think I've had a... I think I can see where she's planning with this. Is it going to be that Catherine is going to get Michael to tell Alison about what's been going on and it's going to make Alison completely turn off from Michael completely and trust Catherine even more? Oh, God. Knowing her, I wouldn't be surprised if this is where this is going. Maybe she doesn't even... Yeah, and, and what's about skirt? She And she was just... Maybe she doesn't even know she's doing it. But when she sat on the bed in that long silk skirt... I could see perfectly well that she wasn't wearing any underwear. Oh, God, I couldn't. Christ. 
I stopped by Jody's room before going to bed. I glanced in and something caught my eye. A wheelchair! What in the hell is a wheelchair doing in Jody's room? It looks alive! Poised, ready to move. Like a spider about to pounce on its prey. Oh no, it's going to turn out like that one uh, creepypasta I wrote, I wrote years ago about a demon deck chair, but instead it's going to be a wheelchair. <laughs> or it's going to turn out like that Stephen King uh, story of the mangler, <laughs> but with a wheelchair. Oh, oh no, 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 even better. It's Christine. It's Christine, but with a wheelchair instead of a car. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> the wheels seemed to move I fumbled for the lights When the room was brightly lit The wheelchair didn't seem so foreboding I laughed nervously Did you? I didn't see a laugh Then I heard a creaking sound I flipped on the lights again The chair hadn't moved I turned off the lights again and started to walk away And I thought I heard the floorboards creaking under the chair Alison is expecting me to push it around in the yard tomorrow Push around your imaginary invalid. It's such a crazy thought. I can't stop laughing. I'm sitting down here in my office laughing like a fool. There is a picture of us in a frame on the small table by the couch. I took it into the bathroom and locked the door. I didn't want Mrs. Randolph butting in on my privacy. In the picture, Alison and I are holding hands and Jodie is between us, forcing a kid's smile, her eyes squinting. It was a really nice picture. My father had taken it shortly before his death. He had told Jodie to smile harder. Oh god, that's, that's the worst when people tell you but tell you to smile and then we just go, Oh, come on, you can do it even more. Smile harder, do it. Do it! <laughs> we were gazing... Uh, both Alison and I had a peaceful look in our eyes. We were gazing beyond the camera, beyond my father, beyond the moment. I studied the picture and wondered if there was any way of seeing what was to come. Is our future ever imprinted on us somewhere? I dreamed of a far more powerful camera, one that could capture spirits hovering around us. Yeah, go play Fatal Frame. That's uh, that's the way you could do it. That's a game I wish you could play. Uh, Fatal Frame, there. The one the, where, you're, where you control uh, the... The girl going around like the haunted place, like taking pictures of uh, all the ghosts, and have to be as close as possible to you for you to get the most points and stop them. We were standing on the lawn in the picture with a forest as background. What if death itself was silhouetted in the forest of the trees? What if the camera had caught it hovering behind us, looking at us with lust? Oh no! Oh no! Now he's deaf. Gonna try and sleep with everyone. I sat there, grinding my teeth, peering at the photo. Finally, I saw it. The sign was subtle, devious. It was in the trees. They loomed behind us and their shadows cast crooked shapes over our unsuspecting heads. The shadows marked us, scheduled us for disaster. If only I'd noticed. If only I had the vision back then that I have now. I shouldn't go to Catherine's room tomorrow. I knew I shouldn't go. I know I shouldn't go. The other day I was walking out by the old barn. I saw Catherine standing by the pond. She was wearing a long skirt and her hair was loose about her shoulders. The sun was just about to set and it cast that strange haunting light where it only comes at dusk. She had a sort of sad, wistful expression on her face. It was a look I'd never seen before. I wanted to go up to her and ask her what she was thinking about. Suddenly I realised that she had a life outside of mine and Alison's. I wanted to touch her on her breasts, lay down on top of her and hold her there. Make her look into my eyes with something other than disdain. I wanted to push her into the earth until it covered both of us. The next... Yeah, you do that, mate. Yeah, good good for you. Oh. Oh, the music changed. Oh, the music's getting creepy. Again. Is this ever going to change? Hello? This sounds like it could be a save, a save room theme from one of the Resident Evil games. I mean, can't you just imagine like the little typewriter from Ink Ribbon? And there you will find 
and there you will find a um an item box. By the way, I, I tried playing Resident Evil once, but um, I just couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get into uh, the limited, like the inventory management. Uh, I'm trying to trying to find out where to go, and um, just trying to. Uh, I, I, I mean, I get that they're like revolutionary, uh, pioneering games, but I, ju I just could I just could never get into them, sadly. Hello? Dreams too. Dreams, like the sensuous kiss of a spring sun. Drawing blossoms from the snow into undreamed of bliss. Welcome to the light of day. Dreams that grow in flower, spreading their blossom scent, saturating my soul. Then sinking into their quiet grave. What? No! No! We can't read the Yoni Lingam massage book! No! I think we're done with it now! No! Ah, oh, that was one of the best bits of a game. The Yoni Lingam massage, uh, the Chronicles, <laughs> and the Sex Power massage. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Reading that. Okay, let's see what a dictaphone says. Oh, it's 3 a.m. I just woke up. Oh, I had this powerful dream. Uh, Blackberry bushes. Oh. Allison was caught in the brambles and the thorns were oh, what? I've just puncturing read this. her skin. The blood. Yeah, okay, I've read it this. It came out in these huge drops. I've read uh, that in your... Uh... Where they touched the ground, they became berries. Michael was there. He was naked, and he was eating the berries. I think you might have uh, forgot to record this yesterday. Like uh, dripping Catherine. out of his mouth like blood. Okay. Um, what was that? A bridged version? Photographer. A young, handsome, happily married man was ordered to seek psychiatric counselling after he was caught at a shopping mall taking indecent photographs of women. On weekends, the patient took his infant daughter to the mall and pushed her around in a baby jogger stroller. He had rigged the stroller with a hidden camera. He would roll up to an unsuspecting sh ah, upskirt shots, which are thankfully illegal in the UK now. They're thankfully, yeah, it's against the law for you to take uh, upskirt photos now. And, and good, it should be. You not, you can't take photos of people. You can't, you talk, can't take photos of anyone in a, in a sexual way unless you have their consent. He would uh, slide the camera under her dress and snap several pictures. Afterwards, he would post these images on the internet. Well, well that's, that's actually something I've heard on the news. Some criminals do that. The patient was quite proud of his work. He compared himself to a hunter bagging rare game. Shots of women who didn't wear underwear were considered by his internet friends to be the most prized photo. But his favourites were women with unique tattoos or birthmarks on their thighs. Yeah, good for you, mate. Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. Strange how caught up in the past I've been since arriving here. Brian, Colette, and even before them. Images of my childhood leap into consciousness at the slightest provocation. The smell of cut grass as I sat on the swing set, watching my father mow the lawn. Peach fuzz on my... Isn't peach fuzz what you get that when, um... Isn't peach fuzz what you get when you, um, cut your... When you... That sounds like something you get when you shave your beard and, um, it doesn't... And it uh, leaves a fuzz. Uh, I, I don't know. The school teacher's mantra, she's not working up to her potential. My earliest memory is of my mother kneeling beside my brother's bed, explaining to us as I jumped up and down. As I ju- That our grandfather died on Christmas. I... 
As I jumped up and down that our grandfather had died, I cried because my brother did. Right, so you were happy that your grandfather had died? I mean... I mean, I don't know what he was like, but still, that's not a very good, uh... That's not a very good uh, impression to give when you, oh, oh, you do, you do, you're like you're happy that your that your family's dead and we haven't seen any sign that he did anything wrong. So oh, Jesus, I ought to be considering it's so quiet here. Nothing to drive away the memory, but the horrible sociopath memories. But the wind. I ought to be considering the case right now. Yeah, yeah. The one bit that you're definitely planning something with a. Uh, Michael telling Alison about the accident. But tonight, just tonight, I'm going to indulge in Colette. I'm going to pretend I'm in Colette's apartment, but it's so dark I can't see the leaning naked against the headboard. I'm going to stand at the foot of Colette's bed. Oh god, now we're getting a sexual fantasies. My, I feel my knees bend lightly against the mattress. Slowly. I'll begin to undress. First, the buttons on my blouse. When I'm halfway down the front, I'll hear Colette say, Slower, start again. I'll let out a mock sigh of annoyance, rebutton my blouse and start again slower. I'll hear the flashlight click on, and just behind the light I can make her out. I let the blouse fall. The beam of light lingers on my breasts and travels down the waist of my jeans. More, she says. Okay, that should have a comma there. You should put a comma there. I wriggle out of the jeans and stand there as light travels over my nakedness. God. More grammar issues. Come here, she commands. No, I say. She points the light at my eyes, punishing me. I said, come here. I smile. No. I hear the flashlight click off. It's so dark, I can see absolutely nothing. I can hear her breathing, waiting. Then a quick rustle of sheets and suddenly her arms are wrapped around my waist, pulling me onto the bed, and we begin to devour each other. So you're both cannibals. And is that going to be how Colette... I can't remember how Colette died. Is it because you ate her to death? You ate her out? You got, you got the two mixed up? And it turned out you were actually eating her? Because considering what you like, that wouldn't... Uh, 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 okay. Uh, Jesus, okay. Okay, is there anything different with uh, the medicine? No, still the same. What was the point of the medicine? What's the point in allowing us to look at the medicine if we can't see anything different with it anymore? I don't know. Oh. Oh, it's that woman from uh, earlier who was uh, stabbing herself. We only think... We only think we see what we see. Deep down, we know better. Consider this painting of Lucretia, an old story in which a young woman who has been... Oh, that's what happened? Who has been raped, but physically unharmed, chooses to pierce her own broken heart. The act of suicide is not erotic, yet the painting most definitely is. Not because of Lucretia's exposed breasts, or the chain around her... Wait, chains are erotic? Oh, well, oh, I suppose a chain's play. Not even because of her eyes rolling in what appears to be a moment of helplessness. Perhaps even an orgasm. Oh yes, killing myself turns me on. No. What begins to suggest the illusion is the dagger. Long and phallic. Penetrate. That is not what I... Sp I'm sorry, that is not what I saw when I first saw that. I saw her just killing herself. Uh, I did not see. I did not... Um, I did not... Uh, sometimes I have my mind in the gutter, but it wasn't in the gutter that far. I could see her killing herself there. That is not... No. We are stimulated to see beyond our eyes. The shape reappears again and again across the centuries, nudging our senses when and where we least expect it. A traditional portrait of Saint Sebastian painting in the Middle Ages seems innocent enough, but the body, bound and exposed and aware, is as... How is it... Okay, that painting there, I could see, that is not sexy, that is painful. And the arrows are not phallic, I think the author of this just has a... Just as their mind in the gutter, like a 24-7. 24-7. In piece after piece, we are subconsciously stimulated by umbrellas and... Are we? 
Neckties and smokestacks, snakes and ropes and pipes and hoses and tongs and keys that fit so perfectly into the keyhole of a locked door. Okay, uh, okay, you need to get laid. The next TAT will uh, be given in. And even as someone who hasn't had a. Uh, oh God! Oh, oh, no. Something out of his session oh. with Catherine. It's kind of funny because oh, oh. he's not really the type. You know what I mean? Uh, he's just not in touch with his spiritual self. Not open. I really love uh, him, buddy. He puts limits on himself. He goes through life with the kind of attitude that shuts himself off to things. Uh, you know? Not if he really. can't see it or touch it, it isn't there. Wait, you were just getting changed. I feel sorry for him. Were you so doing something more. with another massage with open um, up to it, Catherine? Uh, maybe Catherine will do it. Ah, oh, oh God. She certainly did it for me. Uh, um. I think I'll go make something special for dinner because if he's anything like me. Mike will be really hungry after a session with Catherine. Uh, having fantastic sex gives me the mood to cook. Okay, I think that's what's happening. Yeah, she was just putting a she was just putting a nighty back on. Uh, she was buttoning her clothes back up. So yeah, I think she's been um, having another lingam massage with a uh, Catherine, and then she's just getting dressed again. Uh, <laughs> uh. All right, then. What's going on with uh, the creepy diary uh, of uh, Alison? I want Michael and Catherine to be friends. She makes me so happy. She makes me feel so good. I want Michael to feel good. Oh, I want her to feel good, too. Yeah, this is going to go well. We're going to get in a freeway by the end of this. And I'm going to have to censor the whole of the final <laughs> chapter. <laughs> Jody didn't like her wheelchair at first, but when Catherine sat down in the wheelchair and rolled around, she made it look like fun. It, it, it feels like I'm waking up from a... Oh, Jesus, no. Oh, no. This is, this is not good. This is not good. I'm glad I found this thing that lets me to skip the transitions just to save time. Dr. Betty. Oh. Hello? Dr. Betty. Karen. Are you on the line? I'm here, Dr. Betty. Catherine. I need I your advice. Karen, Karen, you're going to have to speak up. No offense I to can't. anyone who uh, He might be listening. Karen. Who? Henry, my husband. Oh, dear. He's always spying on me. He thinks I'm having an affair with my boss. Uh. Every night he goes through my hamper to, oh, you know, to see if I've been cheating on him. Are you cheating on him with your boss? Well, no. But I am doing something secret. Uh, what are you doing, Karen? Is there a Richard Nixon mask again? I have again? a secret life. What kind of secret life? It started a couple of years ago. Mm. A girlfriend of mine got me into it. It was so thrilling. I couldn't stop myself. I knew what I was doing was wrong and that it might hurt him, but... Uh, what is it? Are you doing drugs, Karen? Oh, no. Nothing like that. Gambling? No, no. I'd never do that. I'm a prostitute. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is there somebody else on the phone? <laughs> Henry, are you on the phone? Oh, my God. Henry, where, where are you? I'm in the basement. Oh, my God. Henry, I can't believe you're oh listening my God. to my phone calls. I can't believe I'm listening to your phone calls. I can't believe I'm married to... To a hooker, oh my god! <laughs> Busted! Dr. Betty, I think I'd better call back later. Henry, you sneaky little rat! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Well, that's why you should make sure that you're not... That uh, you're really sure that you're alone. Oh my god! Oh my god! It sounded a bit like Seth MacFarlane there for a second when he was, um... It sounded like his, um... I, I don't like, um, many of a Seth MacFarlane's uh, animation, but many of his voices are, um, very, very distinct. It, it sounded like his, uh, Brian Griffin voice there for a second. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that, that was a pretty cool... Okay, tender loving care for all the creepiness that you've started throwing in and all of um 
all the strange um and how much I uh all the nightmares I'm getting. You're still you're still throwing in a lot of uh Oh oh hey the group of music stopped. You're still throwing in a lot of a uh, humorous bit. <laughs> The creepy music has stopped. Huh. Huh. What's this? What's this? What's this? No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not quite yet. Okay. Is there something more appropriate on the TV now? Hmm. It's wonderful, the attraction on the feeble-minded, of course. And the continuous motion, if they just let themselves follow it. Of course, you could stare at it till doomsday, Dr. Watson. With no effect at all. Oh, is this Sherlock Holmes? Still, it might make you a little drowsy. Like the white ribbon of road at night when you're driving. The rhythm is smooth, unbroken. When you when you drive and the road goes on and on, round and round. Always the same, winding and winding, and you're drowsy. Hopefully, in the credits, it you're gives um, information Let about where this footage come comes from. Because I, I am genuinely curious. Okay, uh, that one wasn't as uh, bad. And the room looks—is it me or is the room a bit brighter? Uh, anything else? No. This is going to be a test. One of those tests later. I'm, I'm sure of it. There's no way that you wouldn't have, you would have such a distinctive image of a wolf beating their child um, like that. Go to the trouble with that and have it not be a test. Okay, let's go to uh, the test for this one. When you've concluded this one looks this like test, it's going to be different. You'll return to the story. Hopefully, it won't be as cryptic as the. To Tarot card one. Okay, let's see. Let's try something different. Hmm. I want you to look at these stereoscopic images and then answer some questions. Some people find it difficult to see these three-dimensional images at first. So let me give you a few simple instructions. Yeah, first, images, stare at the center of the screen. Now, Hold up your index finger midway between your eyes and the monitor. Mm -hmm. Focus on your finger. Good. Now, focus quickly on the screen again. Do you see how there are two images of your finger? That is the effect you wish to yeah. achieve with the photographs on the screen. All right, put down your finger and let your eyes relax. Let your eyes go completely out of focus. That's the trick. Soon you will see the duplicate images on the screen begin to move. And then they will merge together as one image in the center of the screen. Give it a try. It might take several minutes. Mm -hmm. I could kind of see it. This is, isn't this what they did in, um the the great ace attorney game um i think in the last case it involves um stereoscopes and um double images like this um okay let's look at my index finger i can kind of see it um Yeah, yeah, this has moved. This has moved. I can, I can see. I can see that. Okay. Sometimes I drink to escape my fears. Oh. Uh, oh, wait, wait, this doesn't have anything to do with... I can... 
I, I can answer these without having to do a thing with stereoscopic images. Oh, I thought it was going to be something like that would uh, would be part of the quiz, and I'd be told to point out like uh, things that had chat that had changed. Oh darn it, John Hurt! I was I was a, uh, and it wouldn't be as uh, cr stupidly cryptic as the um. Is the one with a, uh, with a tarot card. So what have to do that? Uh, I think it's gone down a bit. The liquid level. Sometimes I drink to escape my fears. Uh, false. I'm ah. never afraid of inanimate objects. Oh Jesus! This is from. Oh God! It's one of those creepy dolls from a 1987 horror film with the same name. That is a really good film, but. Ugh, that's horrible. It can get really, really, really creepy. The doll's moving. False. There's nothing wrong with taking sleeping pills every night. Um, I think I can see. I think, yeah, one of the pills has moved. That one there. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with taking sleeping pills every night. Um, I don't take sleeping pills. Uh, no opinion. If I found a girl oh, on the sidewalk, I would. Okay, what's the difference between these? Uh, has this thing moved? Uh, let me try the finger trick again. Um, I think it's this thing that's moved or the bullets. If I found a gun on the sidewalk, I would shoot it. Take it to the police, put it in my glove box, leave it there, throw it in the trash. I'll take it to the police. I would like to be given a sponge bath. A sponge bath. Oh, yes. Oh, sponge baths are nice. It's nice and relaxing. So, uh, chill. I like collecting shells and displaying them on shelves. This is moved over a bit. Yeah, sh shells are really, really nice. These are, these are, what's going on? These are normal questions. I mean, apart from a doll, but these are normal questions. True. I keep a heavy object by my bed in case of burglars. Uh, this has moved. Yeah, that's moving. Like the pieces or images. Uh, false. I am inspired by people who triumph against adversity. Definitely true, I'd say. Like in my case, uh, with uh, the ostracising I've received in the past, I can say that I do definitely... Um, I, I'm inspired by people who uh, rise above like uh, prejudice that they receive as a result of um, their creed uh, or uh, different walks of life, uh, anything like that. True. If oh, I God! Think, I will be a miserable, oh. depressed flea. I would be a horribly disturbed flea. Look at the dog's face. Oh, what, what's that? Ah! Oh, God. Oh. Is that what Punky's going to turn into in the next chapter if we get these questions wrong? Oh, God. Those eyes. They look like those creepy dolls from the 60s of, uh, of toys that um, look really, 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 really wrong. Dog's face is moving a bit there. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I'm not really miserable. Into, uh, false. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's Stauff again. And he's going to sell his puzzles to uh, Bat Lady. His stuff toys. Michael? Maybe you should do a let's play of uh, Seventh Guest at some point. Hi, uh... I know you haven't said anything, and perhaps you want to keep it private, but did you and Allison decide to adopt another child? Uh, why do you ask? Oh, dear. Uh, I, I know it's none of my business, but I just want to tell you I'm really happy for you. I think it's a great idea. See, we were driving by the other day, and we saw Allison out walking a child in a wheelchair. What? Well, we would have stopped, but there was a nurse with her, and, well, I guess the new one's, um, handicapped. 
Ooh, but she seemed like a cute little girl. Another child. Well, obviously it's none of my business. I, I just wanted to wish you luck after uh, all that you've been through. Yo, dear. Bye. Um, oh dear. Has Catherine abducted a little girl to force her to be uh, Alison's daughter? Or this does not ring well. This does not bode well. Um, where's Punky? I miss Punky. It's been way too long before we've seen Punky. Without, without seeing Punky, I mean. Oh, well, uh, there's Punky. I can hear Punky. Punky. Where's Punky? Oh, where does he Punky? Oh, we're not seeing Punky! What's wrong? Oh my god. I'm so happy. Why are you crying because me? you're happy? Catherine gave this to me. Jody did it today. Oh dear. Yep. Yeah, are you sure? Maybe it's one we didn't Catherine, see before. Catherine, you in the stack. manipulative bint. Michael, can't you see? This is a picture of her new dog. Wait, that's yeah, supposed right. to be Punky? It's the first creative thing she's done since the accident. The wait, accident? Where, wait, where's the other child? Yeah. Catherine got her to do it. She can work miracles. Well, that's one way of putting it. Nothing Catherine does surprises me anymore. Is she up in her room now? That looks more like a mouse. She's preparing for your or session. A, or a long-tailed rabbit oh drawn really, we, really her. strangely. Compared Just to a go dog. With it. It'll be wonderful. She's a gift that's been sent to us. From Hades. From hell. Okay. A gift from hell. God. This lady. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. You're early. That's good. Oh god, how's this gonna go? Uh You look upset. Well yeah. What's wrong? It's this uh this drawing Allison has. Hmm. She had a good reaction when I gave it to her. She's coming along much faster than I expected. It's just that she thinks I mean, it's so much like Jody's drawings. How'd you do it? I simply traced uh, some parts of a few of Jody's drawings oh. and put them together in the shape of the new dog. He knows. Clever, don't you think? And he's not scolding her. Something of a shock, isn't he? Well, I see that. And you look like you've had a bad day. What the hell, Michael? Oh, you were gonna try stopping the what? Oh, this is a sponge bath. This is one of the questions that actually uh Oh oh no no Robbie's back. I thought, uh, it won't hurt, I promise. You won't even notice it when I shove the well, knife into like your back. Again. Nice and deep. It's not so easy. What are you afraid of? <laughs> yeah, you don't like where this is going. You, I guess. <laughs> Where? Yeah. You don't have to be afraid of me. I'm not. A I'm just here to make you feel better. I'm not afraid of you. I'm very, very. Uh, Where your hands going? It does I'm, feel good. Uh, I'm supposed to. Oh god, is this gonna turn into like uh, the room when uh, that one guy's eating chocolate and then his girlfriend just like goes down on him and then he gives him the most ridiculous derpy face ever <laughs> when he's supposedly having a uh, having an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, chocolate is a symbol of love? Uh, what are you doing? I'm going to mind meld with you! Ooh. Oh dear. This must be you, ladies. Oh, jeez. 
Oh, getting a bit ah, getting a bit grabby there, aren't you? Uh, oh, God. oh, his face! Let me show you the oh wonders of the Yoni Linger Massage. Oh. Now I can eat you like I did my girlfriend. Uh, uh. Wait, was he eating his uh, nose? Oh no no we came back from work and now it's uh okay so it's not too late but where's Allison? I say you had a true meditative experience. Okay, Matt called it the meditation is her is uh, Catherine uh, having uh, sex and uh, yoni lingam massages with her. I'm still bummed that um we've reached the end of a yoni lingam massage saga. Never done this. I should never came in here. You could have called the police. Wow. You're an idiot. You should have called the police ages ago and told them that your nurse is trying to manipulate you and your wife. And you could have avoided this. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, oh. This is completely out of hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, we've all heard stories of therapists and doctors sleeping with their patients, but this, this is so... Well, sleeping with the patient's spouse is <laughs> just as bad as having sex with the patient. He's it's just even a... worse. This is what I've been know saying. What she's doing with Alison in those so-called meditation sessions. Yeah, I called it. And you should have called it too, John Hurt, instead of just popping up in green what screen. What the hell here. does she think she's doing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm the one who gave her the break. I helped her get her license, for Christ's sake. Yes, you sucked. I cared about her. You saw well, This is how she repays me. Just what the hell is going on here? <laughs> you tell me. How would you want to bet that's John Hurt? That... Should Michael confess his infidelity to Alison? How would she want to bet that that is not John Hurt acting? That is John Hurt after he read the script. And... He was just storming about in the, in the green screen session after reading it, and then he was just going off off on a tirade about what the hell is going on, and and uh, the people who were recording it were just like, oh, actually, this is really good. Let's record this. <laughs> that would not surprise. It's not like people who was pacing about and just decided to come back to the. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Uh, should Michael confess his infidelity to Allison? Well. Yeah, it sucks, but he kind of did a wrong thing and he was tricked into it, so... Uh, and he should have done more, so... Yeah. I enjoy conjuring up strange inventions that do nothing. Uh, define inventions. Um, what, you mean thinking about... Uh, oh, you mean like Roland Emmis? Uh, inventions or... Uh, sometimes. I would most like to have a dream where I am flying, having sex with a beautiful stranger. Well, no, it would be with someone that I know and care and trust, not just a stranger like, Oi! Oh, oh, hello, love. Oh, hello, love. Nice to finally meet you. Let's have sex. <laughs> yeah, that would go well. Swimming like a fish. Wandering through a mysterious deserted city. Killing somebody that I hate. Uh, eating delicious food. Um, all of them except this one and this one would be ones that I would like to have. Flying, swimming like a fish, wandering through a mysterious deserted city. Well, I am a bit of a gourmand when it comes to uh, trying to eat new things. I do like uh, eating new things, so... Eating delicious food, but then I wake up and uh, 
I'm, I'm eating my pillow. Catherine seduced Michael. Oh, duh! That was starting off in here for a change. Uh, okay, let's uh, go back to. Um, I think that's the end of the session here. Let's go back to the main menu. Oh, the, <laughs> the Yoni Lingam lives on. Yeah, the perfect. Uh, uh, how long is the, uh, from now? How long is this game? How long have I been going? This is episode ten. Profile. Believes that secrets should not be kept from spouses. Declines to comment on fantasy life. Dream about delicious food. Remember to make dinner reservations at Chatelain. Uh, I'm guessing that's a fast food, uh, not fast food, a fancy food chain. Oh, I'd like to go with that. Uh, feels appreciated, respect and love. Respected and loved. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's right. Okay, what's the next bit gonna say? Is it gonna be something stupid? Suggest that patients drink a mixture of ginseng and ginger tea for increased energy. Well, I mean, there are t sometimes I can sometimes get lethargic if I stay up late at night, uh, early into the morning, so that's actually not a bad one. Yeah. Huh. That's not right, man. Oh, I'm definitely not as weird as the chiropractor for spinal alignment or the acupuncture one. Ah, oh, okay. So... Uh, oh, wow, we made a complete... Uh, I mean, episode 9... Episode 8 uh, started off um, with it being creepy. Uh, episode, uh, But then episode 10 started to go back into normalcy. But it's with... It's with Catherine trying to seduce Michael, so it could... This is probably just a calm before the storm. I'm imagining that, like, with a birthday party coming up, Alison going around with a different uh, child that somehow popped up, and, uh... The, the strange absence of Punky. I can tell that we're probably going to get into some very uh, messed up things in uh, the next few chapters, and this is just going to ease us into it. Ah, oh, okay, so... I'm going to go and uh, take a break from uh, the game for now, and uh, let me know what you think about it, about uh, the recording. Hopefully the audio uh, quality with uh, the new headphones is alright, like the sound mixing. But if 